Let's get our Bibles in our hands tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad I'm a child of God. I'm so glad I'm a child of God. Thank you, Lord. Say, this is my Bible. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I can be who it says I can be. My mind's alert. My heart is receptive to receive the uncompromising, the unchanging, the infallible seed of the Word of God. For this is God's Word speaking to me. I'm going to be a doer of the Word and not a hearer only. I am a resurrected spirit. I think like it. I speak like it. I act like it. And I live like it. I am a glory carrier, a revival influencer, and a power shifter. Hallelujah. You may be seated. My, 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 my. I will just give you a little, little short nugget here before we get started in the message. I looked up the definition of exalt. And it says, to hold someone in very high regard. Think or speak high, or think or speak very highly of. Raised to a higher rank or a position of greater power. Hallelujah. I said raised to a position of greater power. It also means to elevate, to praise, and to glorify. Hallelujah. So when we praise and worship him and we sing, I'm exalting you, you're giving God the highest praise you can give him. Amen. And he certainly deserves it. I said he's put up with us so long, he certainly deserves it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Well, we're going to pick up on the Holy Spirit tonight, and um, we started it on Sunday. And uh, the more I study, the more I, the more I realize, even me personally, we need to get the Holy Spirit more involved in our lives. He needs to be a participator in our lives, but we have to allow him to do things. He's got many different roles. He, the Holy Spirit has got many different uh, work roles and things that he does in our lives and that he's responsible for, but we have to include him, I guess is a good word. We need to include the Holy Spirit in our walk with Christ. Amen? Because we know the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We know that he is our comforter, our counselor, our helper, our provider. He is also our standby and strengthener. So he is always there with us. Like I said, when we become born again, that Holy Spirit comes and dwells on the inside of us. When we receive him as our Lord and Savior, when we speak and confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, he comes and dwells on the inside of us. So let's include him more. How many of you want to include the Holy Spirit more in our life? I mean, he is there. He is our intercessor. He is what we go to when we need things. We, we, we use that Holy Spirit to communicate with the Father. Are you all with me? So let's go to Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to start. I'm going to read verse 19 and 20. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, Go therefore, this is Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. This was Jesus' commission to his disciples before he was going back to heaven. Jesus said, Go therefore, talk to his disciples, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So if you think about it, the only way to make disciples of men is by teaching. Ministering, teaching. That's how you make disciples of men. Teaching the Word and with the help of the Holy Spirit is how we are to make disciples. We have the same commission that the disciples have. I don't know if you know that or not, but we have the same commission. We are to make disciples. And you do that through not just your words, but through your actions, probably more importantly. Amen? And we said this before many times, because the Bible, a lot of people, when they see you, is probably the only Bible they may ever see. 
and it can draw them in by the way you act, by the way you talk, the way you live. Amen? So to me, though, this signifies the importance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, as we said, is an essential part of the Godhead Trinity. We know God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all three separate entities, but there's only one God. I notice sometimes it can be confusing, but that's how it's set up. God the Father, God the Son, God, three different entities, but all of them are God. It's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Up until now, up until now, talking about Matthew chapter 28, 19, 20, what we just read, up until now, Jesus has been the only one that was pretty much doing the teaching. You got it, right? He was pretty much the only one doing the teaching, but now Jesus is what you call uh, passing the baton. Anybody seen those races on TV and... They're not marathons, they're re, uh, relays, relays, where you would go and you pass the baton to another person. But that's what Jesus was doing. He was saying here in, to his commission to disciples, hey, I've done my teaching, now I'm giving you the authority. I'm passing the baton over to you to go into all the nations and make disciples. And uh, what are they going to teach? They're going to teach the same thing Jesus taught. Because the Holy Spirit is going to remind them of the things that Jesus has said to them. Because he gave them the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to send back my Holy Spirit to go with you. Are you with me? So everything Jesus commanded, everything Jesus taught is what the Holy, I mean, is what the disciples were going to be teaching. The content of this teaching must be all things that I have commanded you. That, that's what it says in verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things which I have commanded you. The disciples went on teaching the whole counsel of God to make more disciples. And after many generations, that responsibility now falls on, guess who? Us. We are to teach the people about Jesus. Don't be, um, don't be shy about Jesus. Don't be shy that you are a Christian. No matter how this world's getting, you still stand up for God. I'm on God team. I said, I'm on God team. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Jesus sent his disciples with a mission to fulfill, but he did not send them alone. It was the Holy Spirit, which I talked about this Sunday, the designated representative of Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit is, the designated representative of Jesus. He constant pre his constant presence was more than enough to strengthen and guide the disciples as they obeyed Jesus in going and making disciples in all nations. Having the presence of the Holy Spirit, like I said, it means many different things. It's not just one thing, but some of the three top important things is his presence, talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's presence means protection. His Holy Spirit's presence means power. His presence means peace. That's the three things we want to talk about tonight is his protection, the power, and peace. We are never out of his sight. We are never out of the Holy Spirit's sight. Or we're never out of his supervision. But we have to allow him to supervise us. So, so many people want to do it their way when they get in trouble. And that's why you probably get in trouble because you did it your way. So we got to allow the Holy Spirit to help us, to lead us, to guide us, and direct us. And he's not going to, it's not going to be a, to me, he hadn't come and just say it, but there will be an unction in the Spirit. If you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, if you're in tune, living right, standing with God, when you go through things and, 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 and you get ready to do something, make a decision on something, and you might need some help, and they don't feel right, you just get that, that nauseous feeling on the inside, you can feel, that's that, that's that Holy Spirit telling you that you shouldn't do that. And, of course, you know, the other way, too, is if you get that unction and you feel good about it and you think that's what the Holy Spirit, it, that's the Holy Spirit confirming that he's uh, on board with it. So you can't, you can't be, uh, you can't discern the Holy Spirit if you're not living for Christ. Does that make sense? Sin distracts you from that. Other things distract you from that. Not just sin, but there's other things. If you're not walking to live righteously each day, then you're going you're gonna to struggle in this area. I guess that's the best way to say it. 
Didn't say you wasn't a Christian. I'm just saying that there's things that's going to distract you that's going to keep you or hinder the Holy Spirit. Oh, y'all, y'all got that? Okay. So, so, so we, we, we said that, that we'd never be out of his sight. We'd never be out of the Holy Spirit's supervision. When Jesus says, I am with you always, he's always there to direct us, to protect us, to comfort us, and to carry out the work of grace in us. Thank God for the grace of God. None of us would be here tonight without the grace of Almighty God. Amen. And in the end, I like this, in the end, the end, he will crown us with a crown of glory and the crown of immortality. And he will look to us and say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Man, can you imagine that day when you get a crown of glory on your head and Jesus says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. But when we are functioning in the presence of God and being obedient to his word or we're being obedient to his commandments, the Holy Spirit will protect us from all the snares and traps of the enemy. Now, let me make sure you understand this. Now, protect us from the snares and traps doesn't mean that you're never going to go through things. As long as you live in this world, you're going to go through stuff. The Bible doesn't say that you're going to live without tests, without challenges. But the Bible does say, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And that's what I want to remind you that are battling tonight. Be of good cheer. God has overcome whatever you're going through. Amen. So you're going to get through it. And you're going to get through it victorious. And you're going to come out stronger than you were when you went in it. Amen. So don't feel bad about going through it. You're going to, like I said many times, you're either coming out of a situation you're in the middle of a situation or you're headed to a situation. But when you got that Holy Spirit on the inside of you, it'll make that holy, that'll make every situation that you deal with, you be victorious over. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody say, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Say it again. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He will provide us the power. We talked about protection. He will provide us the power we need to overcome every situation that comes up against us because it is the Holy Spirit that allows us and also I can say enables us to use that wonderful name, that name that is above every name, that which is the name of Jesus. Say it with me. Say there's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Always when I pray for people or pray for things, I always like to say, in the name of Jesus. You always pray in the name of Jesus. It says, therefore, uh, verse 9 and 11, or 9 through 11, Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. It says, therefore, God, has, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and those on the earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And I like this, what it says in the Message Bible. It says, because of that obedience, God lifted him high and honored him, talking about Jesus, honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever, so that all created beings in heaven and on earth, even those long ago dead and buried, will bow in worship before this Jesus Christ and call out in praise that he is the master of all to the glorious honor of of God the Father. Hallelujah. We know the name that is above every name, that name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will provide peace. That's the third thing we talked about. Remember, we talked about protection and then we talked about um, the power and now we're talking about peace. The Holy Spirit will provide peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding so that we don't have to worry and we don't have to fear about anything that happens in this world. We see a lot of stuff, a lot of turmoil. There's, the Bible says there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. 
and we see it every day. All you do is cut the, cut the news on. You're going to see wars and rumors every day. Folks, I'm telling you, we're living close to the end times. I mean, we're living close to the end times. Uh, I probably need to teach on this. I did it before, but it talks about the end times. You're going to be uh, wars and rumors of war, and also be lawlessness abounds. We see this every day. There's not much left that can happen at the end of the time. Everything's being fulfilled now that it's talking about the end times. But, um, but, the, but the Holy Spirit, thank God, no matter what is going on in this world, we know there's some issues. Haiti's got some issues. I think their government's been overthrown by gangs and all. And, but it doesn't matter what goes on in this world. Even though it seems like the world is becoming more corrupt every day, we should keep focusing on what the Word says and allow, listen to me, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to provide that supernatural peace in your life. You have to allow that Holy Spirit to provide that peace. That's Jesus' peace. That's His personal peace. We've got to allow that. We're, we have access to that. Every, no matter what, we always got access to that peace. That peace is always available to you. Always available to you. I like what Dad often says, faith and fear cannot be roommates. That's good, isn't it? Faith and fear cannot be roommates. So you're either operating on one side or the other. You're either operating more in fear or you're operating more in faith. And when you're operating more in fear is when probably you're leaning towards trouble coming your way. So we've got to keep operating in faith. Let's go to John chapter 14. So if you notice, I do teach out of the Bible here. I love coming to church on Wednesday night. It's something different about a Wednesday night environment where I can just, I, I, I just dive in. I mean, I dive into the Word on Sunday, but this Wednesday night, it's just a, you get a little more, more dialed in for some reason. I don't know. Don't repeat that. All right. John chapter 14, verse 27 it says, peace I leave with you. Whose peace? My peace. This is Jesus talking. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. And let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. Like I said, in a world that seems to be bombarded with trouble, Jesus says we can have an untroubled heart in a troubled world. Thank God for that. We can have an untroubled heart in a troubled world. We don't have to participate in that part of the world. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. There is nowhere in my Bible, and this is talking about, this is the things that Jesus left his disciples. There's nowhere in the Bible that it says that Jesus left his disciples gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Have you, have, you, have you seen that before he went to heaven? He didn't say, I'm going to leave you gold, frankincense, and myrrh. His last will and testament was he left his two greatest possessions, which was greater than any fortune you can imagine. Number one, he left the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, he left himself back because the Holy Spirit is a direct representative of Jesus. Are y'all with me? So he didn't leave gold, frankincense, and myrrh. He left the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And in number two, we don't leave this one out, he left the peace of him. He said, I, the peace of Jesus himself. He said, I leave you my peace. That means his peace. Do you understand that his peace can never be tarnished? His peace can never be contaminated. It doesn't matter what, you're going to have peace in every situation. Jesus lived a life of peace. We can live that same life of peace. We don't have to let anything get on our nerves. I know this is easier said than done, but it's true. Live a life of peace. The two most important possessions that Jesus had, he left to us. Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16 says, Now may the Lord of peace himself Give you peace. How many times? How many times? Always in every way. The Lord be with you all. I'm going to read that again. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. Everybody say always. In every way the Lord be with you. Notice that Paul says the Lord himself gives you peace always in every way. 
What does always in every way mean? I'm glad you asked me. It means at all times, on every occasion, without exception. Are you getting that? Always in every way means at all times, on every occasion, without exception. So you got no excuse for being down in the dumps. You got no excuse for calling mama or aunt so-and-so and say, you won't believe what I woke up this morning and I couldn't hardly move. And You got no excuse. You get up in the morning and say, thank you, Father. I'm healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me. And healing power of God is being manifested right now. You got to get bold. You got to get confident. And who you are in Christ. You think the Holy Spirit is just sitting over there in the corner? Just, you think the Holy Spirit gets headaches? You think he just gets up sometimes and says, I just don't feel like dealing with you today. <laughs> and, he, and he probably got a lot of, he probably got some excuses. He probably should. <laughs> no, let me just. Uh, <laughs> How good have you been this week? Don't answer that. Don't answer that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit is always available. We got to include him in our lives more than we do. I'm, I'm talking to myself too. Hallelujah. But wow, that is what Jesus gave to his disciples and also what he gave us. The presence and power of the Holy Spirit and the peace of Jesus himself. So if you're not functioning in the peace of God, guess what? You're malfunctioning. You're malfunctioning. If you're not functioning in the peace of, you don't have the peace of God ruling and reigning in your life, then you're malfunctioning. That means you're not doing something right that you've been created to do, that you're not doing. But you can do it, and you will do it through the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Let's look at the benefits of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 says this, from a very familiar passage, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I didn't say anything that was negative in that scripture. Nothing at all was negative in that scripture. Against such there is no law. This is the attributes that the Holy Spirit provides for us. Let that sink in for a minute. This, these are the attributes that the Holy Spirit provides for us. As we have the Holy Spirit within us, we can experience all of these positive feelings and attributes that are promised to us. So no matter what life throws or what challenges it brings, the Holy Spirit is there with us with these attributes and these feelings. Amen. John 16, verse 13 and 14 says, However, when the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. Now, you really got to tone in here. Don't, don't, don't let your mind wander. You got to really tone in here. And He will tell you of things to come. Number verse 14, He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. The Holy Spirit will take what is mine and declare it to you. Jesus reveals the work of the Holy Spirit here. He will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will remind them of the specific truth about Jesus and the significance of what he said and did. Are y'all getting that? The Holy Spirit says, I'm going to remind you. I'm going to bring back to your memory what I did while I was here. I'm going to remind you of my commandments. I'm going to remind you of what I said. That's how the Bible was written. It was written by the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit that enabled the prophets to write the Bible because it reminded them of what Jesus did and what he said when he was on this earth. But the Holy Spirit will take 
what is mine and declare it to you. In these two scriptures, we can see the work of the Holy Spirit himself. Holy Spirit will guide, he will speak, and he will declare. And I like to use the word confirm beside the word declare. He will declare means he will confirm. What is he confirming? He's confirming everything that Jesus has spoken of. Everything he did and everything he said. He will guide, speak, and declare. What is he declaring? The truth. The Bible is nothing but the truth. So that's what the Holy Spirit is declaring. Remember, Jesus identifies himself as the way, the truth, and the life. So it is the Holy Spirit, the way, and the truth. The truth being, what is the truth? The truth is the revelation of God. Are y'all getting that? So the truth is being the revelation of God. John 4, I mean, John 12, 49. I don't want to pause here. I want to keep the same thought. For I have not spoken on my own authority. This is Jesus speaking. But the Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. This is Jesus talking. Just as Jesus Listen to me. Just as Jesus says that I only speak on what my Father says, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit only speaks on my behalf. Why? Because we can trust that Jesus and the Holy Spirit share the same source of revelation, which is what? God. Did y'all get that? Let me read that again. Just as Jesus says that I only speak on what my Father says, Jesus also says that the Holy Spirit only speaks on my behalf, on what I say. Because we can trust that Jesus and the Holy Spirit share the same source of revelation, which is Almighty God. You see how all three work together? See, the Holy Spirit will never contradict the Holy, I mean, will never contradict Jesus. And Jesus will never contradict God. Okay. Hallelujah. Since the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, takes what belongs to Jesus, and since what belongs to Jesus belongs to God, the Holy Spirit will guide us, speak to us, and declare to us the truth, which is the revelation of God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. That's how, you see how everything works together? Everything works together. Kim, y'all can come on up. I'm going to close with this. The Holy Spirit, a member of the Godhead, bears witness of our Heavenly Father. And Jesus Christ, He, the Holy Spirit, is the source of or a personal testimony and revelation. He can guide us in our decisions and protect us from physical and spiritual danger. Listen to what all the Holy Spirit does. He is known as our comforter, and he can also calm our fears and fill us with hope and expectation. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, believers are saved, filled, sealed, and sanctified. Set apart for the kingdom of God. So my encouragement to you tonight is understand that the Holy Spirit has an essential part of your life if you're a born-again child of God. But we have to include him more in our everyday life. He's just not with us on Sundays and Wednesday nights. He's there with us on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and of course, Sunday. he's always with you. Yes. And his job, his job is to help you. He's the helper. Amen. Are y'all with me? His job is that when we, the, the Greek word that was used to reference the Holy Spirit, I said this Sunday, is parakletos, P-A-R-A-K-L-E-T-O-S, which means one who is called to one side, especially to be a helper or a helpmate. It also means to be an intercessor 
an assistant or one who pleads the cause of another before a judge. The Holy Spirit is magnificent, just like God is. The Holy Spirit knows all things, just like Jesus does. And he's there to help us, to comfort us. He's there to lead us, guide us, direct us, and make decisions for us. Are y'all with me? So when you operate in the way you do that, of course, it goes back to the same principle. You have to operate in faith. You got to believe that the Holy Spirit is within you. You know, a lot of Christians have trouble believing the Holy Spirit is with them. Got kind of quiet on me tonight. But the Holy Spirit is inside you. That's what the Bible says. I send back my Holy Spirit. When you become born again, the Holy Spirit comes and resonates on the inside. So we got to include him in our everyday life. I, I, I don't know... We don't know where we would be without that Holy Spirit, but we wouldn't be on these pews tonight. Amen. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Thank God. Everybody say, thank God, thank God. for the Holy Spirit. Amen.